let's talk about skylines. Normally when we think about a skyline, we're thinking about a city skyline, right? Where the buildings, the shapes of the buildings touch the sky, creating a sharp line of contrast. And then each city, like London, has its own distinctive skyline created by those shapes as they touch the sky. But we can use these skylines in art as a very simple way of telling people where they're at. If I use unusual shapes, for instance, that you haven't seen in the present and you're not familiar with in the past, the assumption is, oh, well, this must be the future because I've never seen a skyline that looks like this. Therefore, futuristic. But if we go in the past, maybe the 19th century, we could say oh, the city skyline was, was full of chimneys and factory smoke coming out of smokestacks. And we know where we're at. Right? Very simple, no detail. Or, of course, maybe something more medieval castles and such. So the, the skyline being a very simple shape we can put in our background and tell the, the viewer where they are, maybe even when they are in time. Then that leaves our mid-ground and our foreground uh, to really be more, I don't know, impactful. Right, so they can have a lot more punch in that in that foreground and the midground. Foreground is the subject, and the midground is going to tell a story. Mountains, mountains can just as easily be our skyline, and trees. We love trees. Mix in some some roofs from some homes. Now it's a suburban skyline. And we're familiar enough with these shapes that we understand them. If I use coniferous trees, like fir trees, as the skyline, well, we're probably in a northern place where that sort of skyline would be found. So, in closing, skylines, very simple, no details, just a shape make a big impact on your drawing.